Lincoln believes B2B marketing can be B2B brilliant, B2B bold, and B2B breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B marketing mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer's journey while building your brand. A platform with trusted data and lead generation you need to beat your KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always seen by those who matter. So let's get ready to be too boldly go where no marketer has gone before because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything you can be. Rethink your B2B marketing ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs and Enigma Podcast. Today I am here with Jennifer Strout of Motivate You, which is over at MotivateU.net, correct? Yes, that's correct. And so Motivate You, what I gather, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is actually twofold. It's a platform for trainers and yoga instructors and you know health instructors, I'll say, to engage with their clientele over computer, phone, laptop, iPad, all that stuff. But you also have classes on there too for the end user. Right, yes. The original idea was just to sell it directly to the trainers to then offer on-demand videos with integrated motion tracking and live classes with integrated motion tracking. That's like our unique feature. Um, And then all these community features. And when we launched that on Twitter, I was getting a lot of people who were going to the website and saying, wait, but how do I sign up like as an individual? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you have to have a gym or a trainer that's on there. And so after saying that over and over again, I was like, maybe we should see if, you know, like test to maybe see how else, much interest yeah. there is. So we did a one of those like fake tests where you click on a link and it says sign up, but then it's actually, it's a waiting list. Yeah, <laughs> so it kind of like answer. garners like how much interest there is. Within 24 hours, we had over 300. Oh, wow. People sign up, so you're like, okay, this we're on to something, let's do this. Yeah. Um, but before I had my children, I was a yoga instructor and personal trainer. Okay. So I went ahead and set everything up as a business myself, but it's actually proved to be fantastic because I am constantly going through the same things as our primary clients in implementing everything. And so it's very easy then for me to give them literal step-by-step instructions yeah. as opposed to somebody who's like just looking at it from the outside. I'm actually in the middle of it with them. You're dog footing it is what we call in technology. <laughs> You're dog footing yeah. your own technology, which is awesome. And the thing yeah. is, so you say, you say there's motion tracking. So what, what's that do? How is that different from just like what is what is motion tracking? How about that? <laughs> yeah, so there's different forms that like the the one that um, is has kind of like out there already is uh, I don't know if anybody's ever used like these different video games where uh, like the Wii Nintendo Wii was one oh, of the first yeah. ones to come out where you do a yoga pose and it's like once you get it it's like okay now I see that you are doing this pose like oh, you're doing okay. this specific pose. But the problem is that, and that technology now exists for phones and things, like I can see that you've done a tree pose. The problem was that all of the motions in between leading up to getting into a perfect tree pose and then getting out of it were not being tracked. And so we are tracking all of the motions between the trainer who acts as like the guide or the the model. And then every single client is getting compared to that model in real time, we pull data about once a millisecond. Oh, wow. And then we give a feedback score from zero to 100% as to how accurate the client's doing at that moment. And so it's self-correcting. So the clients who are seeing it, if they go red or depending on how competitive they are, even yellow, (laughs) because we use a stoplight system, red, yellow, green, 
um, then you can know that you have to kind of oh pay more attention on not doing this form correctly and and oh, and one of my gamified. best gamified a little bit yeah sort of but also so you're getting the most out of your workout right like mm-hmm. most of us are way over scheduled and when I was like nine ten eleven my grandfather had these Tybo videos and you'd pop it in the VHS and it was awesome and you're punching the air but I always was like I don't know if I'm doing this right and and I'm like I don't have the muscles like what am I I must be punching wrong like am I twisting my arm the wrong way is yeah. my elbow on the right spot you know so I wasn't getting the most out of the workout that I could have because my form was off mm-hmm. but there was nobody to tell me how to fix my form it was very one um, way exactly and and the thing is with trainers too if they're there's some 2D aspect about being on on the screen and yeah. so there, you can miss and have a trouble being able to give feedback, especially if you're having multiple clients. So, what did you do before you you found this? I mean, you were a yoga instructor and personal trainer, right? That's what you did right before this. So I have had one of those careers where I've done like lots of different things, but I have my master's in counseling. Okay. I was working in emergency departments doing crisis uh, oh, wow. counseling work. Then I decided to go back to medical school, and as well as in medical school that I did the personal training. When I was in grad school, I actually started doing tutoring, and so I had continued to do tutoring and just kept taking new clients. And so up to when I started this, I was doing my tutoring business because when I had children, I stopped doing anything but that. Exactly. So that was was the only only business I was doing because it was very flexible in terms of Mm -hmm. the hours. Yeah. And then I also helped start a brick and mortar business and a nonprofit. Oh, that's um, all. Jeez. <laughs> before I started this one, but the, this was the the first business I started that felt like a big leap, like that it was gonna be more risky. But yeah. I started after the pandemic, and so my mind kind of got tossed around that life is way more unpredictable than Mm -hmm. we think it is and i can wait for the perfect moment to do this but it's never going to come and what if i don't make it long enough to see that perfect moment so i went against my grain of being a super cautious person and went for it oh there you go what's the best thing about being an entrepreneur so ever since i was young i've always had i always get super passionate about something and want to wanted to follow that through so i think working in hospitals and also, I also worked at ADP right out of school. When you're mm-hmm. working in big or- organizations, there's a lot of roadblocks to making change, even if it's obvious to the people there that change needs to be made. Yeah. So not dealing with the bureaucracy, I think, and being able to follow through Absolutely. with something that you're passionate about, but also that you can see can make a difference is huge. And then an obvious one is the flexibility with the time. Like I could take a break in the middle of the day to spend time with my children and then work when they go to sleep. Yeah, it's, um, it's wonderful And I can make way. my own schedule, yeah. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and get right back to the show. LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose-built to make B2B marketing mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer's journey while building your brand. A platform with trusted data and lead generation you need to beat your KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always seen by those who matter. So let's get ready to be too boldly go where no marketer has gone before because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything you can be. Rethink your B2B marketing ads and get $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. So what's the scariest thing? Yeah, so like I said, I'm a pretty cautious person. I'm a planner. Um, one way I I dealt with that was I did user interviews before I launched the company well, that's to make smart, sure it yeah. wasn't just a good idea for in my own head. Um, but like kind of mitigating some of that risk. But it it is risky to to mm-hmm. start. Like if you want it to be successful, you really have to put your whole self into it. And so you can second guess yourself like with anything is this the right thing I should be doing and but that's part of being human and so first knowing that what you're going through is normal helps and then also I think having other people that you surround yourself with that are also entrepreneurs and reminding each other that you're all going through 
some of those emotions yeah, can absolutely. be helpful. But yeah, just the stress of the unknown is oh, it's the scary. hardest part. <laughs> it's so scary, I know. And here's the question I ask everyone. What is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? Besides um, snacks for the kids. <laughs> yeah, probably whatever your motivation is, because that, that goes back to, to like the hardest part and the fear. And so if you can keep reminding yourself of what your larger goal is, even outside of the business, like why do you want to make an impact aside from the like the, the vision there? Like why do you want to be able to continue to be an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and focus on that? I every night before I go to sleep, I actually read my list of goals, which is broken down much more granularly. So I have my life goals, my 10 year goals, and then I break it down all the way into like monthly goals. Oh, wow. And I look at them, but I also look at my online vision board because I have one behind my desk that's paper, like an old school one. But I always look at my goals right before I go to sleep. And so I also look at my, 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 vision board that's just on my phone it's just the easiest to pull up Mm -hmm. and that is really honestly what keeps me going because there's definitely times where i'm like oh but on my goal list i also keep a checklist of everything i've already accomplished oh that's good and there's some days where i'm like oh my god there's no way i could do another one and then i look at my list and i'm like but look what i've done over Mm -hmm. the last couple months if you had told me three years ago that i would have done all this there's no way I would have believed you. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I think it's just important to continue to ground yourself in where you want to go and why you want to get there, and then remind yourself of how far you've already come. That's fantastic. So Jennifer, where can people? Where's your watering hole online? I know you're on Twitter as well, but is it LinkedIn? Is it Twitter? Where can people come hang out with you? Yeah, I'm definitely on Twitter the most, and then LinkedIn, the second. Okay, Most, so, I just have a lot of fun on Twitter, so I Twitter's host some fun. spaces there yeah. every week, basically. Oh, really? on Yeah, every week, Tuesdays at 3. So if you like startups, if you're a founder, you're thinking about com- becoming a founder, you just want to work at a startup, mm-hmm. we have very open Twitter spaces where you can just show up there an hour every week at 3 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. Oh, and wow. I think we're on our like 40, 40th something. We're coming close to hitting, we'll hit a year in October. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, they're just a fun open space to talk about. We have a different topic every week, or sometimes we just have a completely open topic depending on what people are wanting to gripe about. And there's also a very funny, very bouncy video on your pinned tweet as well. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to smile and get and see out what positive vibes, get some positive vibes. Watch that video. Yeah, that that came from when I was getting when I first started the company. I'm getting some wins, and I'm like, all I want to do is run down the hallway of my business and give people high fives but we're remote distributed <laughs> you, so you it's like that, yeah yeah so i have to sometimes pretend i'm giving high fives and talking about keeping your energy up and yeah. being excited and rewarding yourself for the good things like i will sometimes literally look at myself in the mirror and give myself a high five but that's kind of like it. the video yeah. of what that looks like. like i love it this is celebrating it and not forgetting to just about what, what you've done just moving on you have to absorb that happiness the win and that joy exactly yeah well, this has been so much fun jen this is and that video is tops it off so everyone go to strout s-t-r-o-u-t motivate you using this the letter you and check out that video join her spaces check her out check out jennifer over on linkedin as well or you're very very prolific over there as well it's, i've had fun following you since i've known about you so this is great thank you so much for being on thank you for having me seth That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast strategy of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network.
You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Lacey Boggs hosts and produces a great podcast called A Stone Marketing Detective, a little bit different than your normal podcast on MPN. Lacey, tell us what these fine folks will get when they listen. A Stone Marketing Detective is a fully scripted and produced fictional radio play that follows crack marketing detective A Stone as she bamboozles the bad guys and detects dastardly deeds in the marketing industry. The podcast is a funny, tongue-in-cheek look at content marketing, shady marketers, and suspicious marketing techniques online. And I think it's a fun new way to have a business podcast that improves that marketing can be playful and effective. Where can people subscribe to this thing? You can go to acemarketingdetective.com or find it in your favorite podcast player or go to the Marketing Podcast Network. You heard her. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.